So we ended up here with just a real a real square block to, to work with. Okay. And so here's where I went ahead and finished that one. In fact, I'm going to put it in our show. And if you come down to the show, Dave, in, in April, you'll see it. This we is, this... need you to click on us. I mean, it says to ask you permission. Yes. I, I put that on there last time. Because... Okay. It just okay. It just started recording. Thank you. There Sorry to interrupt. Okay. And so that's where we started. And this is where we want to end up. This is the one I, I was doing along with you guys. I was doing this one, and then I, I was doing another one as well. And I went ahead and finished that, finished that one because I like these guys. And and I showed you some that I've got. And I got a little I got a little stand here for them. I like that. And then there's another stand. Let's see if I can. I can. Uh, it's gonna be. If I fall and hurt myself, tell my wife I love her. I've got this set. I don't know if you can see it coming down, but I got this set here. These are the extra ones I have. Some of them are. I don't know if you can see some of them or not. I'm gonna probably drop this dug on thing. See, there we go. So I got a bunch of those plastic ones or uh, resin ones that, that uh, uh, Chris Hammock used to do. So you see right there in the middle where the guy's got the scowl in his face right up above the, the um, helmet. That's one of Chris Hammock's. The next one's one of mine. The lady with the, with the thing on her hair, that's from Europe. And that one in the very corner is mine. Then one right next to him is another golf. The golfer is is Chris Hammock. The firefighter is Chris Hammock. The guy with the green hat and the and the pipe in his mouth is Europe. The one right there that you see next to him is European. That last one there is mine. Wow. This guy he does a lot of them, and they're just they're they're pretty expensive, but they're 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 neat neat stuff. There's a couple of cowboys I did. There's another Chris Hammock. There's another European one. I've got a set of them. I don't know where they are. I probably sold them. Uh, they're articulated, meaning they uh, they move. So you push the button or the lever in the back, and they turn to turn to kiss each other, or he raises the mug to his thing. Here's another one from Chris Hammock. He did, he said he he said he made about a million of these things all together because yeah. he would make the original, send it off to China, and uh, I, was, I was listening to him tell a story one time about how he, he got another company that was going to do it cheaper, and they screwed it up, and he had he had not built into the contract that he could get his money back, so it was like okay that was a mistake, don't do that again. But anyway, the the, the idea is you can do just about anything. That's a bottle stopper. Here's a little dog I was playing around with. I thought that was a cute little one and I did it as a bottle stopper. Well, Yorkie kind of thing. Anyway, there's there's no end to ones you can do with these. They're just fun little things, whether you make them as full figures. Sorry, I don't mean to be off the screen all the time. Full figures or busts or just the heads or whatever. This one I really like, but I would have I would have liked to have made that smaller. I, I just didn't cut it down anywhere. It's pretty it's about an inch and a half, maybe. Anyway, that's where we're at. And so there's a lot of work here because we're going against the grain. So this grain right here, when the grain runs this way, we're going across the grain, across the top. There's no easy way to get around that. It's just going to be pin your ears back, get your shoulders going, and... Uh, a lot of times I get lazy and I just want to do it with power. And so there's nothing wrong with that. My friend would always take a, a, a Dremel or, or a Fordham and run uh, the, the bit down through here just to get all that out. Because it is, it is a lot of slog and a lot of work. So let me switch and then we'll start carving. Pin that so everybody can see it big. Okay. 
I got my little blue dot in the middle, so I hopefully I won't uh, won't get too far off of there. So anyway, here we go. Always wear your safety gear. If you're not going to wear your safety gear, then you can't blame anybody else for when you have to go to the hospital. Your wife, your significant other, whatever, will yell at you, and they have every right to do so because you should have your safety gear on anytime you're working in using sharp tools. I've got these stubis that I'm using. I really like them. I like them because they stay sharper longer. It takes it takes a little bit more to keep them keep them sharp, but they do stay sharper longer. And all I'm going to do is just keep going in through here. Now, Yvonne asked last week, "How do you get that little roll in there?" I'm going to show you that in just a little bit. Move move the computer out of the way so I got room to carve. But I'm just going to come in here. And I'm just going to take off. There's a lot of wood to take off in here. The thing you have to be careful, and I could probably pull up several of them, is getting this real thin. You take off too much between here and here, from here to here, you can make that thing really, really thin. In fact, you can hold it up to the light and you can see through it. I don't know about you, but I don't, that's a mistake I've, I've got to fix once I get it to that point. And my friends always say, well, just put a hat in it or make it a bullet hole. And I'm going, you know, that's the easy way out. And I'm not looking for the easy way out. For me, I'm looking for the right way. And so this is a time where if you haven't sharpened your knife yet, put me on hold and go sharpen. Because you're going to need tools that can cut. Otherwise, you're going to get very frustrated at trying to cut cross grain with dull tools. You know, raise your hand if you've ever tried that. I bet every one of you are raising your hand because we all do that. We all get to where we want to. I, I signed up to carve, not to sharpen tools. I know when I was in Europe in the military, I talked to a fella who was a wood carver and went to the, there's a, long tradition of wood carving in the in the Bavarians in the, in the Black Hills and um, Bavarian Hills. And I got to talk to a guy one time because we were wandering around the town and their, their carving places have big glass windows. And you can walk by and just watch them and see what's going on and have a good time. And sometimes they'll even invite you in. Well, we got invited in, my wife and I did. My wife, Tecla, I don't know if any of you met her, but uh, we got married when we were in Germany. Both of us stationed over there at Wiesbaden, at Lindsay Air Station. And uh, we loved to travel, so we got to travel down to Oberammergau and Partenkirchen in southern Germany. And Oberammergau has a lot of carving studios. Well, find out, long in a long story, find out that as an apprentice, as a carving apprentice, you spend the first year sharpening tools that's all you get to do and if you can't sharpen tools they're not going to let you into their program because it's, it's an apprentice program and so that's one of the things i learned early on i had a couple of good teachers that would teach me how to how to sharpen tools i i, I can i'm usually pretty good at sharpening tools a lot of people bring their stuff to me in ones and twos i wish they'd bring the whole dog on bag that way i could solve all the problems but Anyway, sharpen your tools often. Sharpen them well. You're, you're going to spend a lot of money if you can't sharpen tools to pay somebody else to do it. Now, I don't, I don't charge a lot of money. I generally charge about $5 a tool, depending on the size. The bigger they get, the more time i got to put into it. But I don't generally like to see people carving without sharp tools. Now, they, they may be sharp and not look like it because they're brand new and so they forget how to do things and, or haven't learned yet how to do things. Like go in here deep and deep and deep and get that groove in there that we want. And so they forget how to do it as they go on. All of a sudden, they're ringing all over the place. So it's, 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 not, it's not funny to watch, but it's funny to watch. You know what I mean? I don't like to make fun of people. I'm, I generally... Don't try to make fun of people because I, I normally give them enough ammo to make fun of me all the time. So I don't like it. I don't like it coming back to me. So I try not to do it to other people. But 
they just some people that are goofy, and you know, you know what I'm talking about. They're goofy. They need to be poked at every once in a while. It's even better when they're, you know, siblings or cousins or whatever. Anyway, we're going to just keep doing that, keep doing that, so I don't want to bore you to death. I'll show you the steps, and then we'll move on. I'm, I'm moving this moving this brim on the outside of the brim. I'm trying to get that cut to where I can round it over. Let me get it under the camera there. I want to get it to where I can round it over here on the top. I want to round it over here on the bottom where the ears are. I can't really do this much on that. I like to get that hat pretty much shaped in. I know a lot of people say do the face first because if you don't do the face first and you spend a lot of time on the body or the hat or whatever and then you and it looks perfect and then you get to the face and you screw it up you might as well throw it away. Had a guy bring a carving to me yesterday at the senior center and he had literally in his words screwed the eyes up. And so I'm explaining and I'm explaining and I'm explaining. I'm saying, okay, do you, you got all that? Can you go home and do that? He goes, no. I can't. Uh, there's too many steps. I said, okay, what do you want me to do? He says, once you do one side and I'll do the other. So I did the left side, my left, the carving's right side, and I fixed that eyeball. And he's watching the whole time. He goes, wow, I'd have never thought about doing that. We'll see if he can go back and do that. But generally, a good carver can find a way to save just about everything on a carving. If you're pretty good at carving, it doesn't matter what you've done, short of lop off the ear, you can always glue one back on or whatever. But a good carver generally knows how to fix his own mistakes, and a great carver knows how to fix somebody else's mistakes. So anyway, it's going to take a lot of hogging out here. I'm just going to, I'll save that for the next video. But let's get on to the next step so that you can, you'll know what you're doing next. I like to round the head around the, the top of the, of the, of the hat. The one thing I've got to remember when I'm doing hats, the number one thing is make sure that the hat fits the head. We all remember uh, Laurel and Hardy, Stan, Laurel, and uh, I can't remember the other guy's name. I looked it up the other day. Anyway, what you want to make sure is on that hat, you'll see this is the face. What I should get is a line that goes up to match the inside of the, of the hat. I bet somebody's calling me or texting me about not being able to get in. Alvina, there you are. Oh, you, i got a hold of you. Okay. I'll leave that rest and ignore that. Anyway, what I want to make sure is that the hat, the width of the hat right here is the same as the width of the face. And this one isn't. You, I mean, we've got a lot of wood here on the face because you cannot see the edge of the face. It goes up like that, which means it's going to come out wider than the hat. And that's that way on both sides. It'll come out wider than the hat. So I want to make sure that what I'm doing is I'm going to take this down. So we're going to have a thinner face, even thinner than the lines that we drew in. And so I'm going to grab a hogging tool, one of the one of those, um, where is it at? Where are you at? Fishtail gouge. If you don't have a fishtail gouge, you miss it out. This is a number three from, from Stubai. And I'm going to take off a lot of that wood that doesn't match the hat. So I'm not going to, I'm going to ignore the ear right now. I don't care about that. Eric? Gonna, yeah. What's the length on that tool, if you don't mind checking? The length on this tool is. No, I mean on the, for the width, I guess. Width, sorry. The like, width. How, is, how many inches? Yeah. The width is about two centimeters. Okay. 10, 20, 20 millimeters, but you probably want that in American. I'm going to say it's about a three quarter. Okay. Thanks. That is, and this is, I've got several of them. I think I showed them to you in another video. I've got several of them. That is the thickest one that I've got. This flex cut one is, is, is a good one, but it's much thinner in terms of the, the, the thickness of the metal. You can see the difference in the two right there. I think I have that one. I just didn't realize it was a fishtail. But, well, anything that flares out like that, I call yeah. it fishtail. Other people call okay. it something else. I've got a real narrow one, and I've got another one somewhere. But anyway, this gets us where we want to go. Thank what you. I'm going to do is I'm just going to get real heavy, and I'm going to take off a lot of this wood here. I want a lot of this wood gone because it doesn't match the, the head. The width of the head doesn't match the width of the hat. 
you can see how they're offset right there. So I want to take wood off here and wood off here. The thing I have to be careful with is I don't want to take this cutting edge that's really sharp and jam it up into that hat because now I've got a lot of cleanup. And while no matter what you do, we're going to have cleanup under there because we're taking this down, I don't want to chew into the hat. You see a lot of people that will take the hat and they do something like this to it. They'll take the hat and they have, you can't see that. They have little cuts right here. They make all these cuts to make this hat look ragged. I don't do that on my hats. I can make it look ragged by painting it that way, make it look like it's stained and beat up and whatever. I generally don't put all these um, all these marks here. I don't. I don't. I've never seen a real cowboy hat looks like that. So I, I don't do that. But I, if you chew it up, you're going to have to do a lot. So anyway, here we go. Whistle while we work, right? Just removing a lot of wood. And however you do that, whatever whatever floats your boat in terms of removing wood, a big tool that you can close, don't get a tool you can't control. Get a tool you can cut with and you can control how deep it goes. Like I got my thumb right here, which means I don't go into the hat. I'm, I'm hitting my thumb and I'm not hitting. Now if I lengthened it, I would be hitting it all the time here. I'm going to pull it back just a little bit so I'm not going to be hitting up into that hat. And what I want is a plane that basically goes from the point of the nose back to that plane. I want a fairly smooth transition. I also have to take into consideration, remember I talked some time, some time ago about planning. How do you plan not only the story of the cowboy, you know, what story is he telling you, but you're planning what's the next step. I can take off all this wood, but if I wanted a, a, a sideburn, I got to leave some wood here. And I, I'll, usually with sideburns, I leave it overly large because the sideburns don't usually come down that far. You know, the ear is right here, come down to the bottom of the ear. That's usually where most people do the sideburn. But I want to leave, I, if I take all this wood off and then it's, it's relatively thin here, now I can't put a put a sideburn in there. Now I can't I can't get that sideburn in there because I've cut all that wood out in there. So I got to leave that room there. So and because what I want is to bring that bring that hair down in the sideburn. What I really like doing is having the sideburn come over the, the side some of that sideburn come over the ear. I like that look. It's hard to do because you get carried away on making sure the ears right, and then you forget to leave room for the hair. But that's what I'm doing right now. I'm just taking off a lot of wood. And the sharper your tool is, yep, go ahead. Would you do me a favor? Would you measure from the hat down to the bottom of your chin? I think I've got a really long chin and I'm trying to get mine to match somewhat of yours. Don't worry about the length of the chin and I'll show you. This is about an inch and a half. Okay. Let me show you why I don't, want, I don't want you to get hung up on the chin. I want you to get hung up on making it yours. Let me admit, okay. let somebody else in. Let me show you a one with a, with a heck of a chin. Two of them, actually. These are both carved by Ryan Olson. Should you worry about the chin too much? No, I, mean, I guess not. I mean, that one there's got quite a chin, quite a face to him. I really like that. Here's another, another Ryan Olson. Look at that chin. So the face is elongated up here, and the chin and the, and the bottom part is elongated down here. So there's a lot we can do with this. Come on, focus. So there's a lot we can do with this. I, this is going to be a short chin guy. He's not going to have much, which means you can hide it with a mustache. You know, how long is his chin? I don't know. It goes up under there somewhere, but does that help, Dave? Yep. Thank you. you betcha. All right. Back to it. Taking off wood. Wood, wood, and more wood. Got to put on my safety gear here. Sorry, I was off camera. All in the safety gear. 
So see how we're thinning that out a little bit at a time, leaving an understanding in there somewhere that I'm going to have a side burn. Maybe he's going to have one of those iron side burn things that they used to use in World in uh, Civil War. A lot of those guys had mutton chops and and uh, sideburns and things that come all the way down the chin. But I'm just trying to hog wood off, and I'm not taking off any. I'm not taking off too much at any one time except places where I know I'm going to thin that out. So if I don't want to crash up into here in that brim, I also don't want to crash into here. This is the ear. If I crash into there, I'm going to have to remove a lot of wood. I have no choice because I've crashed too much and taken off too much. Sorry, I'm trying to write down who's attending so I know whether if I do a class that has a lot of attendees and maybe that's because they like that project or something, but uh, just trying to keep just trying to keep an eye on the number so I know where I'm at. See how this thing just slides right through the wood. I sharpened it up here last week. Haven't used it much, but man, it would just It'll take off wood. Okay. The way I've got him looking now, it looks like a dog with his nose stuck way out from his face. And I don't really want that look. I'm not doing a dog boy. I'm doing a cowboy. So it's not really something I want to, want to do. Okay, we're getting there. It's not, it's still not, you can see it's still not reaching the width of the head, so I want to just continue taking off because I got a real flat spot right here too, and I want it to come to a point so that I got a nose there. I have not decided whether I'm going to do a mustache, beard, goofy thing, something like something similar to what what uh, Ryan did over here, or some of these others I've got back here. That's what I like about having different examples. I've been able to secure a few throughout the years and uh, it's nice to have an, a, an example there of how somebody else does it because you, then you can see oh that's how that fits I can fit in 3d I did a our show's coming up in April and we decided that we were going to look at advertising on local TV so we got a hold of a TV channel and and one of the things we were talking about was how there's several different types of learning. One of them is 2D learning. So you, you see it in a book, you watch it on TV. That's 2D learning because you're only seeing part of it. You don't get to see, can you tell me how wide that is? Can you tell me what angle this is? If you're sitting right here in front of me and you see that, you know if I'm looking at making that face look like a V, I still got some, some ways to go. That's what we call 3D learning or authentic learning. You're sitting at the knee of a master or knee of somebody who's done that many times. And they're showing you exactly how to hold your tool, what angle you want to cut out, how much wood you want to take out. Those are the things we're trying to get people to come to the show for because we have a lot of demonstrations going on. So whether you're, our show is, is all five, all five, five disciplines of woodworking from scrolling, wood turning, woodworking, gourd, CNC, carving. We're, we're getting into that where we're showing people how to do that. So we'll have, we'll have demonstrations going on all day long. But we, I wanted, the point I wanted to make was how do you transition from 2D to 3D? When is it, when is it important enough for you to be there or not necessarily, you know, I, I didn't realize this class is set up for people who can't afford to go to their, uh, to a carving class near them or nobody comes, if you live in the middle of nowhere, you're probably gonna have a hard time getting people to come up there because the cost is a little bit prohibitive at some point. Or you can't travel, you know, we got a lot of people that carve and they can do very well, but they can't, you know, like Yvonne or someone like her where you got, you're there to take care of somebody or you've got uh, problems where you can't walk around very well and going somewhere would require you to walk a lot. So trying to make it to where, we've got it is it is 2d 
and trying to make it as authentic as we can so that you know what I'm doing. You see every step of the way and I'm explaining it. I think that's one of the advantages I have as a teacher over a lot of other teachers who haven't been teachers uh, for very long or, or, or never were public school teachers. How do you explain to somebody what you're doing and why you're doing it that way? So I, I, I like to think that I got a pretty good way of showing you why I'm doing that. Why did I make that cut? Why did I leave that wood there and come back to it later? I want to show you every step of the way what I'm doing in the decision making process. So I said we're going to make his face looking more like that. Well that's what we're aiming for. We're aiming for that 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 look, that V shape to the face. And I want to continue that all the way up the, to the head, all the way up to the hat rather. And I'm just going to keep going up until I get the shape I want. Do, can I explain that shape? I, I hope so. I don't know that I could say it is a, you know, whatever sided polygon, whatever, whatever that is. But I'm aiming for a little bit of symmetry. I don't need necessarily need for them both to be 100% looking the same on each one. But I do want to make sure I've got room for whatever I want. Right now, I've left. I'm still a little bit little bit shy of taking off enough wood on both sides. In fact, this one's this one needs more. But I'm almost to the point where I'm going to draw in the sideburns and decide what this guy's going to look like. Or if I don't want sideburns, I want beards. If I don't see a lot of historical pictures where cowboys had, had beards, I'm sure they were there, just somehow they didn't end up in the photographic record. So from there, you want to make sure you got your lines. I got my center line right here, right down the middle. I've got my eyebrow or uh, sideburns, and I'm just going to bring them to the bottom of the, of the, of the ear. So the bottom of the ear is about right there. There's the, uh, the sideburn. And I don't really, really, I'm not going to measure this. I probably should, but I'm not going to. So, because I can eyeball where this one is turn over to that side and I notice this one is just a few centimeters or a few millimeters longer just about an eighth of an inch so I'm going to shorten that just a little bit how wide is your ear the wood you left for the wood I mean for the ear this part right here yes so from here to here what did I say it was uh two and three quarters inches from the back of the hat to the front of the hat and then from this ear I line that line right up right there. It looks like the width of the ear or the, the, the this part of the ear the is block. only, don't, yeah, this whole block is about a little over, it's probably five eighths of an inch, maybe three quarter. Thank you. Let's show up. That's good. Okay. So I got that in. I'm going to take a V tool. A V tool laying here somewhere. Take a V-tool, and I'm just going to cut straight down the length of that front of that sideburn. I'm just going straight down, and it's going to be pretty deep because we still have a lot of face to take off. Now, on this sideburn, know that this bottom cut determines how far down I can go. I cannot make that sideburn any longer because I don't have more wood down here. I've cut in here, so this wood is going to come off. There is a sideburn. Same thing here, go straight in, pretty deep, because you're gonna take all that off. And here I'm gonna eyeball everything here, straight across, that line right there is close enough. Okay. So we're working on the face. I'll come, I'm gonna leave the hat for a while because here's, here's another problem that I've run into. I'm carving, I'm carving, I make this hat, and I like it, and I make the hat, and I make that brim thin. I mean, look how thin that is. You grab that wrong in the wrong space to go to do something, and you squeeze holding onto it. I had to make the right sound. You lose that brim. It's going to crack off on you. So this guy is fairly, it is thin, but it's not as thin as this other. Another one. I, mean, I don't know I, I, I'm going to have to study this and to see see what I want to do. I don't know if I showed this to you, but right here, right down, let me see, get it. Oh, you see it right there? See that gap in between the ear and the hat? There's a hole there. So, so the carver carved all the way through that hat. 
you can see it in the back where you've got a hole. You can see daylight through it. Anyway, got to be careful because you don't, I don't, I don't know about you. I don't like wasting wood. I don't, I'm as frugal, frugal as they get. I'll walk across the street to pick up a penny sometimes. I know, dumb, right? But you just got to be careful that what you're doing is not wasted because you don't want to be working on a carving. And then all of a sudden, sorry, I'm cleaning up here while I'm gabbing. All of a sudden you realize, oh, wait a minute. Uh, I just spent four hours on this thing and I got to throw it away or figure out a way to fix it. You know? That's what makes great carvers. Great carvers know how to fix those things. All right. So I've got that sideburn on both sides. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and this is going to determine how much more of the face I got. I got to take off right in that groove. I'm going to go from top to bottom. I'm going to make a cut right in there and another cut right in there. So make sure I'm not crashing into the hat. I'm just going straight in perpendicular. If you don't know what perpendicular is, ask the fourth grader. They should know. They're learning math at that age. Bottom two. I'll make a couple cuts in there so I get it as deep as I want. And you can see how deep we are in there. Focus! So, now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lay my knife almost completely flat. And I'm just going to take that, that slab of wood in front of that sideburn inch it back make sure the tip of your knife is not crashing into that sideburn you want to stay outside of it so i'm giving that sideburn some shape you know down here Knowing that a lot of this stuff here, I'm leaving this block here for strength because when I go to cut on the ear, I need something to hold it in place and keep it from flopping all over the place or I'll lose the whole ear. I make that cut at the bottom of the sideburn. Come across. And outline the bottom of that sideburn. Now, here's the thing. <laughs> I did that one this way because I'm looking straight at it. Can I do that one the same way? Or is it going to be crooked? You know, it don't really matter right now. But this one is easier to do generally because you're looking at it this way. This one's a little bit harder because you're looking at it this way. So for just general purposes, for me, I do the one that's upside down first. And then I flip it over and I do the other one. Because I can make this match that one. It's hard to match when you're doing it upside down. So I'm going to make that cut in there a couple times. I'll make that cut in here a couple times. Do the same thing again. It's your choice on how deep you go. The depth you put into that is going to determine where your face goes. We could make this guy skinnier than all get out. We can make him look like he needs to ride two horses at the same time just so he can stay up. Stay up. But uh, it's up to you what you're doing with it. Generally, your face from front to back looks like a diamond, like that. And generally, the shape of the face like this comes down like a diamond here. I'm sorry, the, sorry triangle here, diamond here. So the, the top of the head right here goes down to the cheekbones and then comes back into the jawbone. You determine how wide that's going to be. Because when we look, this one is almost right there in straight line with the hat. So if I follow that, my hands are in the way, sorry. If I follow that up as much as I can, the hat and the head should match. You can't see that, can you? They should match just like that. So what angle I got going in here comes out here. And what angle I got going in here comes out here. So I'm almost there. Now, know, knowing when I get back up here, I'm going to take some of this off. I can leave that in a rough spot, or I can go ahead and take some of it off. And I'm going to go ahead and do that. I want to take a little bit of that wood to get that diamond shape that I want. So I'm not coming in at a flat angle. I'm angling it a little bit towards the front so that I've got a, I've got a, a plane 
I can work with. Let's see if we can show that up on the camera. So see that plane right there? That's what I'm looking for, that plane that's leaning in towards the face. Do the same thing over here. I still haven't decided what this is going to look like down here because I don't really know yet. He's not, he's sleeping off of a, a twister, I guess, and he can't talk to me and tell me what he wants. So usually about this time is where I start piddling around with it because I'm, I'm mulling ideas. When I say I'm mulling ideas, I'm mulling what I see from somebody else. I'm mulling what I've done before because one of the problems you run into, the more of these you do, the more they start to all look alike. Unless you physically, mentally, emotionally change what you're doing so that they're all different, a different color is not going to make a difference. It's not going to change a little bit. What you want to change is geometry. You want to change biology on this guy because I don't want him looking the same. As hard as it is to look like them the same together, when I intend that, it's totally another one when I'm just carving along and I'll go, oh, <laughs> Those guys look like brothers, and I really wasn't intending that. Anyway, now that we've got the sideburns drawn in, I've got the head sort of where we want it to be, I'm going to put in a few more marks. Here's the problem with doing these. I know people like Lynn Dowdy and others do it with a hat separate, and I, I've tried that, and I find that infinitely harder to do for me. So I do them all together as one piece. Hat, brim, crown, face, sideburns, all one piece. Which means that limits how far up under here you can go to get a face. If the nose is going to be right here, that's about equidistance. I should have equidistance from the top of the hair to the eyebrows, eyebrows to the bottom of the nose, nose to the bottom of the chin. If you want a longer chin, you got to move this point, which is the outer point right there that's where the that's where the nose should be it's at the farthest point out from the face if you want more of a mustache or more of a chin move that up just a little bit you don't need to move it up much but there's not much you can do about this up here this is going to be what it is because you don't have a lot of room up there because the hat's so thin thin as in width from here to here so now you've got to decide that's a long way from here to here which doesn't leave me the same amount of room from here to here. Because if I were to measure that, and I'm not a fan of measuring everything, I just kind of go with it. From that eyebrow down to the nose is about three quarters of an inch. From the nose down to the bottom of the chin is only a half inch. So I've got to decide, are these equidistant, or am I just going to play and have fun? Am I going to make this a goofy looking guy? But well, once you put those eyes in, the only thing you can do is make them smaller by creeping up towards the head. Once you put that nose in, the only thing you can do is creep up here. You can't creep down here because you already made that cut. So now here's where the, here's the moment of truth. What are you going to do? What is he telling you? What is he saying? Is he a narrow-eyed booger? Is he a big fat-jawed guy? Has he got, if you still got room, you want to put a big wad of tobacco up there. I got one of those somewhere. Hang on. Did you leave enough room for that? <laughs> It'd be fun if you did. But there's a there's a big old wad of Chewbacca. And what you got to look at is one change to one part of the face and what it does. What is that doing? to everything else. Look how that eye is kind of squinted down. Maybe it, maybe it's supposed to be, maybe it isn't. Look at that mouth, how that mouth is, mouth is pulled over here. Even the cheeks are that way, even the cheekbones. Again, just another question. And then we talked about hair over the hat. You know, you, you got a plan for that. That just can't happen randomly unless you're, you know, a whole lot better at it than I am, but that's, that's got to be planned for. You've got to leave the wood where you need it because you can just barely see a little bit of the ear in there and you got all the hair all over it. 
All right, anyway, so that's what we've got to decide at this point. What are we going to do with this fella? What story does he want us to tell? Because I've, you can see the bottom. i got a little more room over here than i got over here. I could put him in there to do that, but let's, let's work on the geometry of the face. Let's worry about that on, the, on another carving. Okay. Is he talking to you yet? Have you got an idea? I'm going to move that nose up just a little bit. I don't want it right there. I want it up here. The bottom to be about right there. That's generally going to make these two pieces about the same size. Let me, let me, let me prove myself a liar here. That is about 5 eighths. And that is about uh, 3 quarter. So 1 eighth of an inch off from there to there. That's okay. I can live with that. What am I going to do? I'm going to start with the with the eyebrow or the the eye socket. And I'm going to take a, a gouge. This one's way too big to get up under there. So I'm stepping down one step about that one. This is a number eleven, about a quarter of an inch. Yep, it's a quarter of an inch. And I'm going to start from the outside and go to the middle and stop. I don't want to go crashing through the, what word am I looking for? I don't want the bridge of the nose. The same thing here. I'm not doing it very deeply. I'm just doing it to see if, you know, that kind of looks right when I step back and I look at it. That looks okay. It could look better. But I just want to get that eye socket in there. Now, the more you know about the geometry of the face, the better you you are able to do what you need to. I know that this eye, this socket, if you take you look at a skull, the socket starts way out here and goes way over here because your your eye is an orb in there, and so there's a there's a socket around structure in there that your eyeball sits in and it's wrapped around with ligaments and skin and cartilage and muscles and nerves and so you got to take that into consideration when you do we've got a lot of room from here to here on this face this is really an extended face because if you look at it the the socket should go all the way over here because this is what you call a zygomatic arch the zygomatic arch is where we put our glasses on and it gives our temples a little bit of a, of a swoop in so they, they they come in like this at the arches that is differentiated when i grab the next size up i did this with this one now i'm going to do the next size up just to do the outside if i've got room i barely got enough room to use this bigger tool to get in there and all i'm doing is extending that eye socket in terms of the zygomatic arch to the outside. Can you see this? See that? Now, I think there's seven and a half billion people on Earth, and I think there's seven and a half billion ways of doing a face, especially the eyes. There is no one way and one only way to do eyes. They take, unless you've done seven billion eyes, they take time to figure out what you're going to do. What are you putting in there? What is it going to look like? What are you leaving room for? How big is this socket? Are you going to make it sunken? Or are you going to make them extend? So when we look at some of these, these ones were, it were sunken in. So push the face back and leave room to get deep in there. You've got to take that into consideration with what you're doing and how you're doing it. So... Am I going to push that eye back way back there? Or am I going to just leave it stick out here and make that eye bulge? I'm looking to see if I have an example laying back here and I don't see one right off, right, off, right at hand. But anyway, the first thing you want to do is draw it. Because if you can draw it, you can do it. And if you can do it, you can see it and all that. I'm going to draw my line. Or you know what I'm going to do first? I want to put dots, which are going to represent the inner... I'm way off on that one. Should be over here. 
what I get for doing it upside down, don't I? All right. So right there is going to be the inner eye socket. And those should be matched up this way. They don't. We don't want them one higher, one lower, unless you're Harry? putting expression in. Yeah. The, the hat's tipped down so we can't see the eyes. Thank you. That's it. Well, I can tip it down so I can see it, or I can tip it up so you can see it. So <laughs> sorry about that. I want to put those inner eye sockets equal distant from the bridge of the nose, and I want to put them on the same line. Because what we don't want is them one to be up here and one to be down there. We don't want oh, them at a crooked. Hey, Peter. So that's what I want to do is make sure where these two dots go. And, and I'm close enough. I'm, I'm off a little bit, but I'm close enough to where I know what I'm doing. Because these lines are straight across. Let me get a marker. These lines are straight across to match up. Okay, see those matching up? So that's what I want to do because that's going to tell me basically these two lines give me the high and low point of the eye socket. So with the eye socket, with when I'm looking here, what I want is to have room up here for an, uh, uh, some eyelids and room <coughs> down here for some eyelids and a bag. So I've got to leave room to put those in there. I don't need much. Am I late? Am I late? Am I late? Started at one o'clock, my time. It's now two. Oh, then I'm an hour late, yes. It's all right. You've done this before, so you've done Cowboys. You, you, you yeah, know. yeah, no problem. I hope so, not. so right in there is where the eye socket is. So now I'm going to take my little one, my little gouge, and I'm just going to deepen that a little bit because he's a cowboy, so he's kind of gaunt in the saddle you know getting out on they're working 15 20 hours a day and <clears throat> not like me where they have all this extra fat laying around so this time i'm going straight across the bridge of the nose so i should see that that profile right there what i'm also going to do is come in with my knife I'm just going to go down about a third of the way from the bottom of that socket to the nose and go in and curve up. I'm, 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 doing, I'm doing a curve motion with my knife. See how my hand's rotating? I'm curving so that I'm cutting off the upper part of the bridge of the nose. What I'm looking for is that right there. See how we, how we punch that out right there? Okay. Next thing is the nose, and I usually just go straight in with a, with a knife. I don't usually use a V-tool or anything. Straight in with a knife at a little bit of an angle under that nose and give myself room to stick that nose in there. That's all I'm doing. I'm not worried about the outside areas or anything. I'm just trying to get that room right there cut in so that his nose is ready to be carved in. Okay, now here's where I'm going to draw again. I've got my center line here, and I'm just a bit skewed off of that, so I'm going to move it just a, a millimeter or two like that. And I'm going to start at this point right here where that bridge of the nose is, and I'm going to go from there, uh, that triangle of the nose, on both sides. Here's where you get to decide how wide that nose is. Know that the wider you make it now, the narrower you can make it later. Once you make it a certain width, you can't go any smaller or any larger. So I'm just putting in the triangle for his nose. That's all I'm doing right now. Somewhere here, about a third of the way up from the bottom of the nose to the eye socket, I have a spot to put in some laugh lines, smile lines. Put those in there so you know where they're going to go. Because if you're going to do a mustache, now's the time to draw that in. If you're going to do a smile line, bring those smile lines in a slight arch down. There's his smile lines. All of us have them. Kids don't have them yet because they got don't have many wrinkles on their face. But the older you get and the less Botox you use, the more of a smile line you have. Useful, 
because you can generally when when the smile line goes you know somebody's smiling at you people that smile without smiling they just move their lips people that really smile move their whole face okay so now we've got it we've got the nose roughly drawn in we've worked on the eyes a little bit in terms of placement we know where they're going to go we just don't know what they're going to look like right now now you have to decide and i'm i'm in now you get to decide whether you're going to push this face back any at all. Bear a minute, i got to plug in my computer. It doesn't want to stay running. There we go. There we go. So we've drawn most of the face, but now what I want to do is I want to work on the ears, because the ears are the second, maybe the third, behind eyes and nose. Ears are the second most, third most important thing in the body when we're trying to do this. So understand that straight over when you measure from your eye socket, this zygomatic arch goes right to the top of the ear. With characters, we can stretch that a little bit because we may decide to make it a flop over and do whatever we want. The bottom of the ear goes straight over to the bottom of the nose. Those are just anatomical measurements that we know this is a straight line over to here roughly and this is a straight line over to here roughly you can't see them because it's bright but anyway that's what we're going to work with so we're going to take off a lot of this wood right here i've drawn two lines on there there's the shape of the back of the ear and there's the shape of the hair if you want to give him more feel free to give him more hair it's entirely up to you that hair is going to go along with the neckline, so those two kind of got to work together. I'm going to start right here. And I'm going to remove a lot of this wood right here. I want that wood to kind of go away because what's left out here, I don't, okay. You decide whether you want to take all that off. You decide if you want to take any of it off. I'm going to come in here with a V-tool. And I'm just going to follow that, that first line I've got there. Make sure you're not crashing into the hat. I'm going to cut that as many times as I feel like I want to, but I want to stay to this side of the ear, not to this. The more I do this, the more I cut over here, the less of an ear I have. So I want to stay, if I'm going to roll my tool, I'm going to roll the flat side down here. Okay. Once you do that, come in with a knife, go to the bottom of that groove, give yourself some fudge factor. In other words, give yourself a little bit of room here. Go straight in fairly deep because that three quarters of an inch of wood most of it's coming off just to be safe along the back where the hat meets the hair i'm going to cut a couple lines in there because i don't want that falling out okay i'm going to take off this wood here i use the fishtail gouge for the most part because it's quicker and right here is just this is just hogging off wood so i don't really care about being very finesse except except where it matches up with something else so i'm just taking off wood and we're relieving that ear see how that ear is starting to come out of there again remove wood and it, whether you go up or down it's up to you this wood's going to come off Careful not to not to break off that ear because if you do, you got to go hunting for another one, and you got you got a pile of chips by now to find an ear. Maybe you find the right one, the one that came out of there, and you can glue it back on, and maybe you don't. But you want an ear there unless you want an earless cowpoke. And uh, haven't seen many. I'm sure there's a few of them out there, but without an ear. It's hard to hear. I'm a poet and don't know it. Okay. Now, about this point is where you step back and take a look as you start to see what it looks like. There's his ear, and you know this is going to go away down here. So we're not talking about a really big ear here. It ain't that big. That's it right there. But what we're going to do is going to we got to now make it to where it doesn't look like it's glued to the face 
it looks like it's just sticking on the face. So we've got to make sure we're, we, we've got to play with it, make sure that it doesn't look like that. So removing the rest of that wood down there. And I generally want to remove all of that wood all the way back to the back to the hair and the, the hat and the jawline. Because I'm going to draw a jawline when I get to that point. So we got that plane where we want it to go. So there's your ear there. There's the sideburn in here. There's the jaw. The jaw generally starts at the back of the ear. If you go down to the bottom, the lobe of your ear, you'll find where the lower mandible, the lower part of the jaw hooks right there. And it comes at an angle. For most people, it comes at an angle. That looks like a face right there. You can steepen it all you want. We don't have a lot of room for a jaw here unless we moved everything up. But anyway, I got that, I got that ear, sorry. I got that ear where I want it to go. And we can leave that there and do the other. Considering the fact it's a little after two, yeah, I'll go ahead and do that and it won't take me that long. All right, this one looks a little smaller, so I'm gonna go outside that line so that I'm giving myself a little bit more. If I have a big ear, I can make a little one. If I have a little one, I can't make a big one. Take that into consideration. Cut here, here, here. One more along the back. Face tail gouge. I'm either off the screen or I'm covering it up with my fingers. I apologize, but I think you know what I'm doing. I just did it a minute ago, so... All I'm doing is taking off this wood behind the ear. So I'm taking off this stuff back here. If you're worried about breaking something off, come in here and make a stop cut because that's the quickest way to make sure that you only take off what you need to take off. Make that stop cut several times because you don't want to take off something you got to go dig in the chip pile and find. Been there, done that. Don't want to do it again. You know, there's a idea behind whatever you're creating, whether it's beadwork, jewelry, a house, whatever. There's always an ugly phase. Ugly phase is that point between when you like it and when you're ready to throw it away. I can't tell you how many carvings I've thrown away because I get to the ugly phase and I just don't like it. it ends up being firewood or whatever. Some years back, somebody got on to me about that and says, you know, how many of those you got? <laughs> the smart answer is too many. The real answer is more than 20. At some point, you learn how to fix those. And you end up with far fewer ugly phases on your carvings. Not saying they don't, they don't stay there. They don't, they don't disappear. They don't. Every, if you create, you're going to have ugly stuff. That's just normal because sometimes you've got an idea and it just doesn't translate too well. 
to what you're doing, and sometimes you, 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 you can't just get there from there. All right, I removed all this wood back here behind the ears, and, and I'm going to look straight down the barrel to make sure those ears match across. So in other words, this line here, I want to make sure it's a match with that line there, and they're pretty doggone close. Thickness, I want to make sure these are going to have the same thickness from side to side as well. So I want to make sure they also come. Here's where that. Here's where the, those little details that we don't like doing because they take a lot of time. Here's where you got to plan. So I got to make sure the ears are both the same size from here to here. They're the same thickness, same spot. I got to make sure they're lined up here and here. I got to make sure they're lined up here. Right there where the, the ear meets the hat and here. Right in, in, I want to be in front of the sideburn. There's one there and one there. I want to be in front of the ear and the hat, in front of the ear and the hat. I want to make sure those four points line up. Because if they don't, now's the time to adjust them. I want to make sure this hat and ear fit. I'm not sure if I'm going to do flop over ears here like these. See those flop over ears? Those are not the easiest things to make. It's, a, it's easy to cut them off and, and make them wrong. But anyway, even if we're not going to do that, we are going to make the shape of the ear about now. This is where your ugly starts to sometimes get uglier. Uh, if you're like me. If you're not like me, you're probably doing it a whole lot better. But I also want to know that realize that ears go at an angle. So ears don't just stick right up here and go straight out from the head. They come in at an angle. Some of us have ones that stick out a little bit more, and that's just the way nature is. It likes to make a joke out of some of us. But what I want to make sure is that what I'm doing is I don't want to cut off this back corner, but I do want to cut off everything else. So I'm going to take my knife, and I'm just going to shave it down at about a 45-degree angle until this point right here at the front of the ear and that point there at the back of the ear form one plane. In other words, they're going to match up when I'm done on a flat line. Like just like this line right here, this flat spain right here, I'm now turning it from 90 degrees to 45. If that makes any sense to you. Tell me if you if you don't. If it doesn't make any sense to you, let me know. I haven't checked the chat in a while. Let's see if there's got one in there. Show chat. Name is Vincent. Maybe. I don't know. I've met a few Vincents in my life. So what that means is that when I look at that ear, it should come off at an angle. It's not straight in, it's an angle. Okay, and so what I was talking about at this point right here, at the bottom of the ear, this point at the top should be at the same plane. So I'm going to make those match. Same thing over here. I'm going to come in here at the bottom, work my way up to the top, when I get done here, I'll be able to tell whether these ears are the same size. In other words, one's not a whole lot larger than another. So, got them cut. I'm looking at them. I don't know about you, but I got one slightly bigger ear over here than this one. Not only is it bigger in terms of size around, but it's bigger in terms of I've already got some, some cuts over here. So let's see if we can't match them up. Part of that is when you add details, you get to take off wood in places you don't, you originally didn't think. Okay. Not sure if you can see what I'm doing, but this side is just a little small, bigger than that other. Looks a little better. I'm going to take the bottom off just a little bit. This is just an eyeball thing. You're looking at the eye one side to the other, or the ear, sorry. Looking at one side or the other, and you're trying to match them up. And then we're going to throw all that out the window and, and, and make them not match up. Looks like this one was cut back a little more than this one, so i got some extra wood there. Trim off the hat side. That looks a little better. One ear, 
second ear. So up close, we can tell these ears are starting to look kind of the same. We got the ear. <laughs> Looking at the camera backwards, I got the ear, got the sideburn, got the nose, got the ear, got the sideburn, got the eye socket. I'm generally got everything in there that I need for a face. I just need to now add the final details on the face. Clean up, clean up, clean up, clean up. I can't talk about that enough. You got to clean up because clean up will tell you where you're, where you got issues that you got to fix. Okay. I still don't feel a, a strong urging one way or the other. And so what I'm going to do is I want to make the ears a little bit smaller. I don't want them sticking out this far because right now they look like they're just glued on because they're big. So I'm going to trim that down. It's going to have the basic same shape, but I want to trim that down a little bit so that it's not quite a big ear sticking out. A little bit smaller. This part of the hat sticking off, so it's throwing me off. So get out of there. Okay. Understand the general shape of an ear is a question mark. In other words, the ear basically looks like this right here. You got the upper part, somewhere in here is the wind flap, and down here is the lobe. You can make it any size you want, but that's basically what an ear looks like for most people. Other people have different size ears, different shape to them, but generally looks like that. Wind flap, wrinkles, lobe. So we've kind of done that and we've kind of not. We've done the flat part of it. We haven't done anything else to it. We're trimming this ear down in terms of size because we've made one a little bit bigger than the other. So we don't want to make it look like one's been tugged on a little more than the other. So we're just trying to get that question mark. Here's that question mark right here down to the lobe. And I haven't added all the details. But I'm comparing it to the other ear and bringing them down so that one matches the other. Okay, it's getting there. But now he's looking more like an ear that doesn't just stick off the head. That's what I don't want. I don't want it sticking off the head. This one over here keeps coming up with pieces of wood that stick out that ain't supposed to be there. Get off of there. Better. Okay, still a little bit more off of this one, and I'm about done with this one because when I go in and do the, the rounded part of the ear, you'll see what I'm doing. So I've got two ears that kind of, sort of, maybe look the same size. What I'm going to do now, 220, I am going to find my big gouge. This is a number 11 and about 3 eighths of an inch maybe. Yep. And what I want to do is I want to give the ear this rounded feature right here. See how that's rounded in there? I want to give that ear. So I'm going to go to, from the outside and generally from the top. I got that rounded piece in there and I got a big thick piece back here I want to cut that off so I'm just going to take a little triangle take that chip out of the back of the ear I bet you there's a whole bunch of people sitting out there watching this saying yeah hey, I wouldn't do it that way it's all right you do it your way so I've got the cup scoop part out right here now what I want is the question mark here's the question mark right here I want to go here and in here, in right here. So I'm going to take that gouge, and instead of carving like this, I'm going to turn it over. And I'm going to give that gouge right there. Be 
be very careful. You don't want to break the whole ear off. So I'm giving it that question mark back there, and I need to give it some more. So I'm going to abandon that tool and go to my knife. And I just want to run that back along the back side of the where the head and the ear meet, and then take that part off right there, part off right here. And then straighten up the little stuff that seems to get in the way every time you do this. So I've got that ear. Take off that square corner right there. Cut that ear. Cut in. The only thing I got left to do is separate it from the hair. So I'm going to go. I'm not going to put hair over the ear. I'm going to go right next to the ear. Take a cut. Bring in front of that. This is the back lead, back edge of the hair around the sideburn. It separates that ear. Going to take a chip out right here at the top. This is where your glasses would go right up above your ear. Make three cuts, one along the ear, one along the bottom, one along the hat. What you want is a little divot back in there. It looks like there's a shadow because that's where the ear meets the head, right here. That divot, you want to make it look like there's there's ear underneath that hat, not just stuck to the hat. So you take that little three-sided chip, one, two, three. Maybe you can see it better that way. That separates the ear from the hat. And then a little cut along the outside of that ear, right where the hat meets it. Just a little sliver. Makes it look like the ear goes up under that hat just a little bit. Alright. Now, other than a few wrinkles if you want them, or a wind flap, the, the part of the ear that uh, protects that wind coming to you. What I usually do is right in there where that round part is and grab a small gouge, real small gouge. This is a, a small drake. And I'm going to go at a 45 degree angle in there, not along the sideburn. I want to bring it back some. I'm going to go 45 degree angle. And you see that little cut that I made? I'm going to grab a little knife or a, or, a tie, or a small flexible knife. Where did I do with that knife? No, oh, well, we'll use another one. What I want to do is from the top of that cut, top of that little lip, I want to come down and curve halfway down the ear. And then I want to do up to match that cut. And so it relieves a little bit of wood back there behind that wind flap. In fact, I still got a little booger right there. And then I want to take that small gouge I got again and give it some wrinkles along the top of the ear. Just one little piece right under that top, top part of the ear, you've got a fold right in there. All I did was carve that fold out. Put as many as you want to in there. It's up to you. It's your ear. His ear, you're carving it. Clean up a little bit. And now I'll give it a little bit of flare. Go down, curve. Take off any sharp edges that are pointed or flat. And there's an ear. Not a perfect ear, but I don't know, point, point to me somebody on earth who has a perfect ear. And I'll carve more of those in. Got a little fuzzy hanging out. Got a way to take care of that. Plumber's brush. Let's show that on the big screen because it's not showing up here. Come here.
Maybe you can get a better look at that ear there. That's what we want to recreate on that other side. Same thing. Got it? Any questions so far? One more in the chat. Let me hit that one. Cowboy without an ear? Maybe. I haven't carved many without an ear, but I've seen a few people that carve them, or some of them carve them upside down because they're talking while they're carving. Anyway, all right, let's do that other. I started with the big gouge. Switch camera so you can watch again. Start with that big gouge right in that ear. Separate the ear from the hat. Get that corner right in there. I want to go deep into that hat. Make one cut along the hat side, one cut along the, bur uh, the sideburn side. Again, just getting that little divot back in there behind that ear so we can make it look like that. Now, here's the funny thing. We're going to do that same thing with the hair. We're going to go up along that. Well, no, we're going to do that later when we after we do after we tool hair. Wind flap. Wind flap up coming. Wrong, wrong one, wrong one. There we go. 45 degree in there. Small flexible knife. Come halfway up that cut. Go from the top halfway down. Okay. Use that tool again. Give yourself a couple of wrinkles in there, fold overs, whatever you want. And we got another ear. Cut off the back of it because I don't want all that ear hanging out the back. I didn't cut it off the hat earlier, so we'll take it off now. Do the question mark on the back of the ear. Go back in here with your knife. Make any adjustable cuts you or adjustable adjustments you need to make on it to make that ear stick out. It's really not that complicated, but it's got a lot of complicated steps. So an ear is an ear is an ear. And by my rec by my recon, it looks like the ears are fairly about the same size. Okay. I'm going to take my knife and I'm going to lay it flat down, almost, maybe at an angle, and go right up the front of the sideburn. Cut that front sharp edge off because that's hair. It ain't going to be sharp in, in front unless you've been to the beauty shop for a long time and they use 14 cans of hairspray. Then it looks sharp like it'll cut you. I grew up in the 70s, 60s and 70s, and I remember all the women in the family come back from the beauty shop with one of those beehive, beehive hairs, stood up in a great big beehive. Okay, now I'm going to take, I'm going to do those sideburns. I'm not, I'm not 100% done, but I want to make it to where it looks like the ear and the sideburn are two separate entities very closely tied together. So I'm going to go to the bottom of these ears, cut out just a little bit of the sideburn so that I've got the bottom of the lobe. I want to separate those two. I don't know if this camera will pick it up, but what I did is I went to the bottom right here and cut the bottom of that lobe off so there's a separation between the ear and the sideburn. I want to make sure that you, you can tell those are two different things. Right here, they kind of do already. I did that on this one, and so I'm going to do it again. A little bit off of there, a little bit off of there. Clean up the really straight, goofy cuts. Clean them up, clean them up, clean them up. Can't even tell you how much to do that. And then I'm going to take off a little bit of that sideburn behind the ear. 
just to show more of a separation. I think I already did that over there. I did not. So I want to go bottom of the ear, bottom of the sideburn, take a corner off. It makes them look separate. All right, I still got hair back here. So I've cut, I got a cut on the back of the blank. That's going to be the edge of the hair. Hair comes generally about halfway up the ear. So I'm going to make a cut right there with my V-tool. Okay. Hold steady. Hold steady. You have a tendency to want to crash into that ear, which means you're going to be looking through the chip pile if you do. Okay, from there, in there, I want to take a cut in there. And then what I'm going to do is bring this is the back of the jaw right here. I want to bring the back of that jaw down. I need a small fishtail gouge. If I got one, yeah, I do. So what I'm going to do right here is the, the front part of the jaw. I want to take that and go in and curve it out to the hair. All the way down to that cut on the bottom of the, of the neck. Top of the neck, rather. So what we've done is we've given that hair a little bit of space. And now we're going to take a big gouge, a bigger gouge. Is that the biggest one I got out? Yep, yep, yep. And now I just want to follow along that jawline. Take those edges off, but make that jawline go right into the neck and get the hair coming straight off of it. So all we've done is just taken that excess wood we had and followed along, along that jawline. So I made that jaw right there. Let's look at it right side up. So we made that jaw right there. The hair is back here. When we get to doing this neck, what we'll end up doing is that neck will go right up to that hairline, cut off. And we'll have to take this neck, and we'll have to round it to fit in, or to fit with the, to fit with the bottle stopper tip thing in the lobby. And I don't know where I put them. You'd think in this little room I wouldn't lose nothing, but I lose everything I touch. Anyway, anyway, we'll look at that a little bit later. So I'm starting to work on that jaw. You can see he's going to have a strong jaw. And I like that. Okay. So again, we're matching. Here's the front of the sideburns we're making sure they match up over here and the ears match up over there too okay so now before we do much more to the face we got to work this hat so we got to make sure the hat's going to fit the face you don't want a big fat head with a narrow hat nor vice versa so we're going to spend a little more time on what this is going to look like the crown and what the brim is going to look like because we want to get to that point where we start to put those details in there so i'm going back to my gouge I'm going to spend a few more minutes just taking off wood with the idea of now I'm not only just taking it off, but I'm shaping it because I'm bringing the brim to the front and I'm, I'm just about settled out in the back. This guy looks like he's got a really oversized hat, but you know what? Those guys then didn't have, most of them didn't wear small hats if they spent time outside because that's a sure way to get sunburn. The hat don't protect your face, don't protect your neck, don't protect whatever. What's the purpose of the hat? So he's going to have a big old hat. All I'm doing is bringing out here on the front. I pretty much got the sides cut in. I just got to shape them now and add a few, add a few more details and take away these great big cuts. And I don't know about you, but I like the hogging part of the wood. I like taking off big old chips. It shows me that I'm doing something I need to do. Problem is, you have a tendency to take off too much. And you have a tendency not to be able to get the details that you want. So, I'm going to keep going on here with the idea of what am I going to do to the, to the, to the crown. 
I'm going to trim it a little bit in the front. Maybe that will lead me where I want to go because I still don't know what kind of cowboy this is. I still don't know what he's going to look like. So all I'm doing is kind of taking out some of those big sideways cuts that I made so that I can trim his hat up a little bit. Okay. I have a tendency to have short hats. And I'm trying to do more hats that are a little bit different. Not always making them all look the same. So what I mean about big cuts, this big one right here, I don't have a matching one over here. So I got to trim those up to where they're going to kind of come together. Because I got two main parts I got to match. I got the side here that's got to match the hat. I've got the side here that's got to match the hat. I actually got four. I got this side here that's got to match the hat, and I got this side here. I want to make sure that the back of the head and the hat match here, the front of the head and the hat match here. And when I made that, if you look at that, that sideburn, and that sideburn, that front of the nose, eyebrows, they go up like this. Give me a grip, something like this. If I lay that in there, that's what the face looks like. See how far away the hat brim is, hat, hat crown? Hat crown is right here, where it weighs quite a bit. So I'm going to have to push some of this back. That's good because it makes the forehead look more like what I want. So I'm going to come in here and do that curling cut again. I'm taking off the, the front forehead, moving everything back right in that plane. So what I'm trying to do is move this back so that it matches that hat. It's not matching. See how far forward this one is? How far back that one is? So I'm going to take a little bit out. The good thing about that is now my eye socket is going to be wider. And it's going to give me a little bit more room to put in a slightly bigger eye. I'm carving without a glove. I just realized that. And that's not a good thing. But the good thing is I'm behind the wood. I know where I'm at. Okay. All right, I'm going to give you some homework. Finish your hat, or at least finish the inside part of it and the crown, whatever you want. We'll work on, I'll work on a little bit more of this. Sorry, Peter, what? Tilt it a little bit. Tilt? Tilt? Yeah, Tilt? Yeah, this way. Okay. So that's where we're at. I, I moved those eye sockets back a little bit more. So you can see them there. It's going back. This part right up here. Because I want to make that match the hat. That's got to be one line from here down. Or otherwise the hat won't fit. Ever put on a hat that doesn't fit? It don't look right or feel right. So the homework I'm going to give you is go ahead and work on your hat. I'll work on the, the front, the outside with you because this can be a little bit delicate up here and back here. It has a tendency to break off because you're carving against the grain. But I want you to work on the in, inside, whatever that brim is going to look like. I want you to work on the crown between now and then. If you feel brave enough, go ahead and do the ears. Um, when I look at them now, I'm seeing this one over here is a little bit smaller than this one, so I'll trim that up and fix that. But I'm going to leave you with a homework. Don't worry about the face. I want, I want us to work on that together. But I want you to work on that hat because that's something I know you can do. Got it? Questions? Got it. Comments, questions? I see that Dave left. He left me a message. I better check that. I might have to address that in the video. Why did you start earlier? We always start at one o'clock my time, twelve thirty. So, what do you mean by starting earlier? Oh, uh, in America, we have America. Yeah, we have time change. Uh, yeah, yeah, we leap to four. Summertime now. Yeah. Ah. We have it. So in, 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 
In March, we changed daylight savings time. Yeah, and we do it at the end of March. Well, it depends on where you live. Some states don't do it, and some states are trying to get rid of it, but I don't know. My wife hates it, and I don't mind it. It don't bother me. It's just sun comes up when it does, and sun goes down when it does, and I don't have anything to do about it. Complain all I want. Ain't going to change nothing, so deal with it. I didn't know that, but now I do this. Next time, next time I'm, I'm on time. We Americans are different, I'll tell you. Any other questions, comments, complaints, concerns? Discussions, cussings? I invited a Dutch lady. Did she come? Not, I don't see her, so. But, yeah. Um, I don't know. I shall uh, talk to her on uh, WhatsApp and explain her what's the meaning. Thank you, Eric. I'm going to have to go. Thanks, Tommy. Good talking to you. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. See ya. So we might get done next meeting, although I think we might uh, we might be close. We'll get done next meeting and then have painting to do. So I think we'll end up with four meetings here on this one. Okay. So. See you next time, Eric. See you, Peter. Have a good week. Two weeks. Yeah, you too. Bye-bye. Bye. Hey, Yvonne. Still there?